Everyone knows how frustrating it can be to lose to a banger or someone that tries to hit everything really hard. They're not even playing the strategy right, so how could they possibly be winning? Well, if you don't know the right way to play them, then it can actually be pretty tough to win. But I guarantee you, by the end of this video, you will become literally every banger's nightmare to play. There could be one tip throughout this video that could change the game for you. So make sure to analyze everything and see if you need to implement any of this into your game. To start, I'm gonna go over some general tips that apply to any situation on the court. These are things that you need to be thinking about whenever you're playing a banger. Later in the video, we'll go over specific situations depending where you are on the court. So the first tip is that when you're playing a banger, you need to be extra conscious that a lot of their hard drives might be sailing long and going out. Think, if Drew's hitting his drives really hard, if it's not within a foot of the net, there's a very high chance that the ball is going to go out. So, as a rule of thumb, when we're up here, we need to be very cognizant of how high the ball is, all right? If I'm hitting the ball and it's at my shoulder height and it's really hard, it's probably going to go way long, okay? So, let's go through a few shots here. That one was in, right? So, it wasn't super hard, landed in. So, I'm gonna hit that one. That one, though, that was about seven feet out, right? So you need to be very conscious of this when you're playing a banger. And the same concept applies at the kitchen too. When you're playing a banger at the kitchen and they go for a speed up, if their speed up's at the height of your shoulder or higher, there's a very high chance that it's gonna go long. So here you'll see, I'm gonna be rallying with Drew, and he's gonna go for a speed up, and I'm gonna let it fly. That landed about seven feet long. But be careful though, because if Drew goes for a speed up and it's not very hard, even if it's at the height of my shoulder, there's a good chance that it'll still drop in. So you'll see here, he'll go for a speed up around the height of my shoulder, that ball is going in. So you have to be a little careful about when you let the ball go. Thinking about this though will give you an immediate boost to your game. So always keep this in mind when you're playing a banger. Remember, if the drive is high, let it fly. Say it with me. If the drive is high, let it fly. The second thing that I wanna go through is that bangers are streaky, which means they have the ability to string together multiple points in a row. The caveat to their strategy though is that they also have the ability to lose multiple points in a row. It's your job though as a smart player to weather the storm and play the numbers. An easy way to stop a banger's hot streak is to just play their partner. If they're on a cold streak, you can play them and you'll get some free points. As you move forward, you'll see that a common theme throughout the video is that you don't want to play into the banger strategy. You've probably experienced this before, but when someone's hitting really hard, it can seem tricky to use your soft game. Don't worry though, I'm going to go over how to counter everything a banger will throw at you in the next two sections. This all starts though with a strong ready position. When you're playing someone that hits hard, you need to be ready for whatever they throw at you. This means you have a wide base with bent knees, your paddle tip is between your eyes and it's leaning slightly to the left. This makes it a lot easier to cover your body with your backhand. You never wanna get caught with your paddle down like this against a banger. This is a recipe for getting hit in the face. Moving on though, now we're gonna cover exactly how to foil a banger strategy when they're back and you're up. This is arguably the most important part of beating a banger. So our main goal when a banger is back is to keep them back. The way that we do this is by hitting super deep volleys right at their feet. So that looks just like this. You wanna hit it as deep as you possibly can at the baseline. The catch to this is, as a banger starts to move forward, your target stays right at their feet. So if Drew comes in here, come to the transition zone, I'm gonna be aiming right at his feet. If I was to go deep, I'm actually giving him a pretty easy volley. See? So you wanna go right at his feet. And regardless of where they're standing, bonus points if you can get it to their sides, okay? If I'm hitting it right to him, it's gonna be a lot easier for him to react. But if I'm getting it to his sides, He's gonna have to move and that can get him off balance. For instance, if my opponent's back, then my target should be here. As he starts to move in though, my goal is to get it right at his feet around here where he can't take the ball out of the air. These targets will move with him as he gets closer to the net. The key thing though is that when you're aiming for these targets, you don't float up the ball so that he can pounce on it like this. As you probably know though, it can be hard to hit low penetrating volleys off of hard shots. To make this happen, there's two main technical things that you need to focus on, and I never see anyone talking about this first one. For one, to hit a hard volley off of a hard shot, you need to have a firm wrist. If you have a loose wrist here, there's a very high chance that you'll feel like you're miss hitting the ball. So on these harder shots, it's actually a lot more difficult for me to get the ball right in the center of the paddle. So that's where the firm wrist comes in and gives me the extra stability to hit these shots clean. So I'm a lot more tight here on these volleys than I would be on my normal volleys. This is an area where some lead tape around the edge of your paddle can help you too by expanding your sweet spot. Keep in mind though, you only want to have a firm wrist when you're going hard off a banger's hard shot. It can be super beneficial to have a loose wrist against a banger too, which I'll go over in the next section. 
The other technical thing to keep in mind when they're hitting hard shots at you from the back is that you don't want to take too big of a backswing. Remember, it's already super hard to hit the ball in the center of the paddle, so taking a big backswing is just gonna make it even harder. Most of your power against a banger is actually gonna come from having a firm wrist and using their own power against them. So everything when you're hitting the ball should be in front of your body and just maintain that firm wrist. If I'm taking a big backswing here, it's gonna be really hard for me to time the ball. The number one skill though to be able to beat bangers is fast reaction time. If you aren't able to react quickly enough to their shots, then nothing else we're about to go through will even matter. The only way to increase this, and I'm serious about this, the only way to increase your reaction time is with intentional practice. You can train your reaction time one-on-one -on -one with a partner like this, where we're just going as fast as we can, trying to get used to these faster balls. Or if you don't have a partner, you can get on a wall or the dink master like this. Just go as fast as you can side to side, get used to these harder shots. If you're just starting out, you might look something more like this, but I guarantee you, the more you do these kinds of drills, the faster you will get. I remember when I first started playing pickleball, I was not very fast, but now it feels like my reactions are automatic. While the goal is to keep bangers back, eventually they're gonna make it in. So we need to know how to handle them when they're at the kitchen. I see way too many players look shocked when a banger goes hard at them while they're up. Do not let this be you. There should be important things that you have to know to be able to beat bangers at the kitchen. So let's get into it. The first thing we need to go through is that you need to focus on your soft game if you're gonna beat a banger at the kitchen. Remember, you're not gonna beat them by being a better banger. You're gonna beat them by being a smarter player. So even if they're going really hard, you need to focus on just using your soft game as you normally would. Another thing to keep in mind is that when bangers are at the kitchen, they'll play really erratic or trigger happy as some would call it. What this means is that they might just go for big shots out of nowhere on shots that a normal player would just dink back. So you have to be ready for this. To counter this, you need to be constantly vigilant and ready for whatever the banger is going to throw at you. So this all starts with a strong ready position like I said before. You don't want to have your hands down here. And another thing to keep in mind here is you want to watch the banger's backswing. Okay? Bangers tend to take really big backswings when they speed up the ball. So you see here, Drew's just, everything's in front of his body, he's dinking it back with me. But when he speeds it up, I see he has that big backswing, but I'm ready for it because I see that he's behind his body. So the second that you see the bangers back here with their paddle, just make sure that you're even more ready to pounce. Now, I wanna talk about what could arguably be the most important skill to beating a banger at the kitchen, the reset, okay? So this is where I'm taking their fastball and dropping it into the kitchen. Keep in mind, if a banger speeds up the ball at you and you don't have a good shot, you're always better off dropping it in the kitchen and giving them a high ball that they can kill, all right? So here, I'll show you how that works. So Drew's gonna speed the ball up at me. I'm just gonna drop it back in the kitchen which really takes away all of his opportunity. Just dropping the ball in the kitchen. So this is where you wanna have that loose wrist that I talked about earlier. Whenever you're trying to absorb power and hit the ball slow, you wanna have a loose wrist so that you have more feel for the ball. Also, when you're trying to slow down a hard ball, you should have very minimal swing. So I'm really just gonna be right in here. The harder that he hits the ball, the less I'm gonna to need to swing. So as you'll see here, Drew's playing the part of the banger, and I'm just resetting everything into the kitchen using that loose wrist and minimal swing. See how little I have to move my paddle to get the ball to land in the kitchen? I'm really not even moving it at all, right? And I have that loose wrist, which gives me the ability to absorb the power off the ball. Sometimes though, the banger will speed up on you and give you a higher, easier shot that you should accelerate on. So it's important that you take advantage of these. So as you see here, Drew's gonna accelerate on me. I can take advantage of that shot, right? I'm hitting that from about here, right? And I think it was gonna land in. So it's important that when I have this high shot above the net, I make him pay for it. Now I want to go over the two best drills to train yourself to beat bangers. Like I always say, watching these videos is the best way to increase your knowledge for the game, but it's a completely different story playing a banger in real life. That's where intentional practice comes in. So in this drill, we're both going to be at the kitchen. One of us is going to be playing the part of the banger, and the other player will be defending against the banger. So it's my job as the player defending against the banger to decide whether I should reset the ball or counterattack with a bigger shot. All right? So that'll look like this. Drew's going big. I'm going to reset that one reset that one too. There I had the opportunity to go big right at Drew's feet. So the opportunity to counterattack is based off how high the ball is, right? So if Drew speeds it up on me and it's really low, that's where I'm gonna wanna reset the ball into the kitchen. But if he goes higher, that's where I have the opportunity to go hard right at his feet. In this next drill, the person playing the part of the bang will be back and I'm gonna stay up and work on using my volleys to defend against his harder shots, okay? So this is where I wanna have those nice firm volleys I wanna have my wrist firm. I wanna use a compact motion, and I'm trying to get everything really deep, okay? This can be really hard if you're just starting, so it's totally fine if you don't look like this. You 
key is that you try your very best. And whenever you hit a good volley, you try to emulate that on the next shot. See how I'm very firm and compact? If I'm taking big swings like this, it's gonna make it a lot harder for me to be accurate. And if you wanna go deeper into how to master the reset, which is probably the most important skill to beat bangers, watch this. <laughs> 